I'm the head of 12 Gates Foundation. It's rooted in interreligious relations. My relationship with this particular work is the interface between uh, technology and technological development and private and public morality. And so my thoughts about the, uh, the emergence and potential of the metaverse is related to this issue of that particular interface. Uh, I believe that human beings are, are limitless in their creative capacity, and that is an unstoppable thing. I think it's deliberate about us. Uh, I think the fact that every human being has a dark side is not an original, an original intention. And so the inexorable evolution from drudgery to absolute creativity that happens by its natural by its natural force of technological development but tragically uh, moral morality and virtue has does not keep a pace with the inevitability of technological development so i believe that regardless of how and some of the commentary here this afternoon has been positively frightening for me to listen to. Uh, but that notwithstanding, and the warnings we've had from every speaker, uh, nevertheless, nothing will stop, nothing will stop this technology from advancing as far as it possibly can and, and even beyond what we might imagine. So if we, if we look at the progress from drudgery, namely working to survive toward the liberation of creativity, namely working to create. What we, what we end up with obviously are creators and consumers. And what we end up with is instruction and entertainment. So basically creators are producing instruction and entertainment, and consumers are seeking either one or both, either or seek both, uh, but at any one time seeking either one of these two things. So the dark side of the dark side of that reality is that we don't only just come up with a greater capacity to instruct and inform, and a greater capacity to learn and grow, or a greater capacity or a greater capacity to create uh, entertainment that's more wondrous, more vaunting, more vaulting, uh, more uh, delightful. Not only do we create both and consume both, but likewise, the dark side of human reality is that the instruction we create can be more profoundly and perfectly demonic in its capacity, and the entertainment we create likewise, similarly, and the and the and the and the, in, and the instruction and the information we seek likewise can either seek to uh, um, enhance our glory or to degrade us to the depths of depravity. So we can seek instruction on how to amplify a demonic or dysphoric side of ourselves. We can seek entertainment, and this has been alluded to that is positively degrading and abusive. So my, my view on the matter is, and I appreciate every speaker uh, anticipating this, recognizing this, and, and uh, even acting to create such things as the XR Guild. And uh, I think it was Lewis that spoke about uh, the, the urgent need for uh, regulation on platforms and so forth. But my, my view is that what's additionally needed are systems that are capable of forging virtue and morality in individuals. I, I don't believe it can be regulated. I believe that what once functioned as classical, classical religious and spiritual obligations on people, these were where they started or were able to keep in check the uh, the departure from the basic humane uh, uh, qualities that we need with which we need 
to treat one another, as several of the speakers has also pointed out. And so the the rear view mirror that uh, I believe it was Toby that just mentioned, it's, it's not available t- in technology. It's also not available in spiritual and religious life. So if we look at the radical force, the radical, uh, the the juggernaut or the speed at which technology is developing, there needs to be developed likewise systems for the creation of virtue that is every bit, not competes with, but is every bit as exquisite, as masterful, as as, uh, remarkable in in its capacity to speak to the human being as a spiritual entity while all this is happening. I don't believe it can stop, be stopped. And I don't believe that regulation has the capacity to hold in check uh, the reproduction of both incredible good and incredible evil. The last thing I'd like to say is that one of the, one of the good models, I think, when we're looking at the dangers of, uh, of, um, the metaverse and AR and VR and so forth, the dangers is that if we shift our look away from ourselves and as the object of the dangers, but rather to the ones we love as the ones in danger, how, how, how do I feel as, as um, who is it, um, Lewis, as Lewis described, every single, the capacity to know every single thing about our lives, not, that's that's horrible for myself. But how do I feel about my that happening to my wife all the time, or to my young daughter all the time? How do I feel in my confidence to create the capacity for intimacy with my conjugal partner over against the amount of the the, in, the subtlety of knowing everything about that's uh, about my partner in excess of what I of doing while I'm trying to live my life, survive my life, and so forth. So I think a di- part of the additional way of enhancing our determination or, or our pursuit of having moral and virtue uh, 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 building within human beings is adding this, adding this net of where of where our passions lie. It's kind of like take my life, but don't touch my child. And so if that can be added into how we are considering how to protect the human experience, the genuine human experience uh, over against the emergence of uh, what will what will happen in what's even, even greater and harder than much of which has been introduced already. 